Hey, this is Matt from InvestQuant. Today is Friday, August 28th, 2020. And today is the day before the last trading day of the month. So we're coming up on the month end and there's often some seasonality biases that tend to take place around the turn of the month. So I figured we would take a look at what has happened historically the day before the last trading day of the month. So let's do that. Let's go into Discover here and look at all four instruments. The setup that we're gonna be looking at is getting long at the open of regular trading hours, which is 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, exiting at the close 4 15 p.m. Eastern time. Currently at the time of this recording, we are trading above the prior day's close. So I'm gonna come in here to gap direction and say that we are gapping up. And that's all that means is the opening print is above the prior day's closing print. And then I'm gonna go into the indicators section and I am gonna put us in a strong bullish market like we are seeing. So above the 10, above the 200 day moving average. And lastly, I'm gonna come into this calendar section and say that it is the day before the last trading day of the month, which is found in the unique day section, day before last day of the month, hit equals there, and then view results. And here we go. So these are the results of going long at the open of regular trading hours, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, exiting at the close of regular trading hours, 4.15 p.m. Eastern time, when you are opening above the prior day close on the day before the last trading day of the month. And I've put that in a bullish environment defined as above a 10 and 200 day moving average. Now, historically, the S&P has 40 samples, the NASDAQ 52 samples, the Dow 42 samples, and the Russell 43 samples. And looking at win rates on these, you can see the S&P coming in the weakest at 38%, the NASDAQ the strongest, 60%, actually uh, kind of completely different action there. You can see on the equity curve there, it has uh, been pretty strong to the upside for the past uh, several years. But if you look at like the ES here or the Dow or the Russell, those three all look very similar on equity curves. So a little bit different action there in the NASDAQ. Uh, the Dow, a little bit weak here, 43%, and the Russell coming in pretty neutral. And if you look at the average win to average loss, you can also see the average loss is larger than the average win in the ES, in the Dow, and in the Russell. So those three, a little bit weaker win rates than the NASDAQ, and also larger average losses uh, compared to the average win. Uh, that is not the case for the NASDAQ, which has been uh, stronger than the others on this day. So historically, three of the four have been a little bit weaker. Now, let me show you something because I thought this looked like a potential setup today. Let's just trade or let's just change this setup to a fade. And we'll change the target to the prior day closing price by going into the exit, change it to prior close. And I'm just gonna throw a, a generic stop on here. We'll use 50% of the five day ATR. Probably not what you would wanna use if you're trading it, but uh, that'll just give you an idea and then you can come in here and look at it on your own. And then I'm gonna go into minimum, uh, add a minimum gap size in the opening filters. And I'm just gonna put 5% of the five day ATR. Uh, that's just gonna get rid of all those gaps that may only be a couple ticks in size and make sure we're not counting those and then run this as a gap fade. And here we go. So this is the results of fading an up gap of at least 5% of the five day ATR on the last, on the day before the last day of the month in this bullish environment. Uh, this is using a 50% stop and targeting gap fill. Again, you can change that stop on your own here in the exit, tighten it up uh, if you want to. But looking at these stats, uh, they are fairly favored uh, for the gap fill. So this might be something you want to think about if we do end up gapping up, finding a way to take advantage of a potential gap trade this morning as well. So uh, again, gap, gap stop size can be changed in the exit. And you can also change the opening filter as we get a little bit closer to the open to say exactly where we're opening. But those looked fairly attractive to me. So good luck today and we will see you next time.